want to share on uh, on uh, a clear faith, clear faith, clear faith. Now, clear faith, because one thing we need to know is that people have faith, but it's not be coming out clearly. And some have questions. Why is my faith not working? Some interpret faith as a feeling. Others interpret faith as a fact. Others interpret faith as a truth or truth, a certain truth. Whichever way, others interpret faith as a motivational feeling or motivation speech or motivational training. But we would like to understand faith in the right way. Now, clear faith. One, we need to understand faith in biblical context, in biblical clear context. If you go to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, let's go there very quickly. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, Bible says faith is substance of things, things hoped for. It is evidence of things not seen. Now, in Hebrews 11 verse 1, there are two common words used there that confirms what faith entails faith and what is involved in faith. One, fa faith involves things not seen. They are just hopeful. Because sometimes what people call faith is encouragement. What people call faith is something that you have been promised. But according to the Bible, the real practical faith is something in your heart. Is a confidence in your heart. Is a tangible evidence substance in your heart that confirms something not seen. It's not seen, but because of God, I believe I'm getting it. It is something I'm hoping for. It's not yet evident, but because of God, I have faith as evidence that that thing will appear. Therefore, faith deals with things, but things not seen, not seen, not seen. And because I have faith, I behave in confidence. I have peace. I am settled. Because of faith. Faith will produce some behavior. Faith will cause you to settle. Because I know it will happen. And faith is evidence or substance of that thing that I hope for. I'm settled. Because I know my God will appear. Even if he seems not to be around. My faith. Faith as evidence of that causes me to settle and to behave and to be in peace because I have evidence of things I hope for that is faith. Now, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that is what we call faith. And if you go to Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, without that, what? Faith. Which kind of faith? Evidence of things hoped for. Which kind of faith? Substance of things not seen. Something that deals with things hoped for. Something that deals with things not seen. It is the thing that God can work with. The faith who talks about things not seen. The faith that confirms existence of things hoped for. The faith that confirms things not seen, it is that thing, kind of faith, that thing that God can work with. And that's why the Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, without that which faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? For God you demand, whoever comes to him must have two achievements. One, God is so clear in you. God is there. Number two, Number two, he is a rewarder. He is a rewarder. That's very good. He is a rewarder. Or he 
appears, he answers, he comes to meet the need. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So, faith must have two activities. One, believing God is there. Two, praying so much, waiting so much with confidence that God will somewhere appear for he is a rewarder. He is a rewarder to those of those who diligently seek him. That is the faith we must work with. Let me ask this question. Does faith demand a status? Does faith demand an, a level? I want to tell you, friends, there are things, there are people who are so low in prayer, so low in their spiritual work, so low in Bible study, so low in church uh, ministry, so low in worship, and yet they want a higher faith. Let me repeat it again. There are people who are so low, but they never practice, they never do any spiritual exercise. They never do any spiritual practice. When we are fasting, they do not fast. When they wake up in the morning, there's no morning glory. What we call morning glory? A moment of prayer. When we, now we, we embark on Bible study, they are not there. When they come now to giving and tithing, they are not there. When we met and God spoke a prophecy, they were not there. When they come to church for service, it's like technical appearance. Now, but such people will demand greater faith. These are people demanding greater faith. But their status is too low. It's like this one. Eh? You have never worked on your garden. You have never put any fertilizer, anything. But you are demanding a bumper harvest. Let's talk the truth. There are people who appear demanding great faith, great achievement, and yet they have never worked on themselves. When you are praising, you are not there. You just appeared, gave a short maybe testimony, and disappeared. Does faith demand a status? In practice, faith, you demand something. Faith, you demand something. Uh, you know, the other day, um, we are talking about how faith can grow. How faith can grow. How faith can grow. How faith can grow. And um, you discover uh, Jesus also introduced faith as something that can grow. Let's see. If you go to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. I hope you are, you are there by God's grace. Luke chapter 17, verse 6. The Bible says, If you have faith as mustard seed, you can say to this mambari tree, Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea. And it would obey you. Now, this, uh, this is a, a, a very strange teaching whereby Jesus is using the most tiny seed in Palestine to refer or to demonstrate faith that can move, can uproot the largest tree. That was around when he was speaking. And he said now. If you would have. Faith of a master seed. I want to say this. Now this is grass of water. This, this is a grass of water. And this is grass with no water. This is grass with no water. And we have. Maybe we are like it. We have two grasses. I have this one. With no water. I have this other one, the one that I'm using now, which is full of water. This other one has no water. But if I put just little, 
If somebody comes around and asks you, what is in this glass? What is this glass? It's water. However literal quantity it is, is water. If we continue demanding, if there's no other water around, this is the only water available. And we need some water. What do you say? We have water, very small quantity, in that grass. You can't change this. You can't say in that grass there's no water. There's water. There's water. You can't refer to this liquid as something else. This is not milk. This is water. Let's say this. Christ is talking about the purity of faith. The purity of faith. This is small quantity, but you can't refer to it as anything else. You can't only call it water. Even if the world turned upside down, and there's no any other, there's no water around in any other place, we can say this is water. We have water, small quantity in a grass. Let me ask this. Do you remember when Christ was followed by a large multitude of people and they were so ugly? Large multitude, thousands, but they were so ugly. And Christ said to Peter, the disciples, can you feed these people? They said, there's no food. Christ chased them away so that they can, in their own way, private way, they can purchase their own food and then come back for the crusade. But Christ insisted, he insisted, these people should be fed. And he asked, now what do you have? Peter said, there is a small boy here who has five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish. Yes, that was evidence of food. It was not adequate to feed maybe Thousands and thousands, most likely maybe 10,000 people. But it was the only food available. I'll hear this. The five ropes and the two pieces of fish was not sufficient in any manner to feed the large crowd. You know, we had 5,000 men and we can assume there were maybe 5,000 women because women are moral. Most, in most cases, they are more than men. Let's assume there are 10,000 people and the only food available was the five loaves and the two fish. If somebody would have asked you, do you have any food around? You would say, yes, we have. We have. Which food? Five fish, uh, five loaves and two pieces of fish. Now, Jesus used the most tiny to perform the greatest miracle. If the only faith allowed is the faith of a mustard seed, and is the only faith allowed, Jesus will use it. If we have tiny faith of like mustard seed, the only faith faith around. No one, nobody will call it fear. Nobody will refer to it as maybe something else. It is faith, however tiny it is, when subjected to the Lord, Jesus will never ignore the small faith. You will still use it. We are talking about faith that is available, however great or small, when subjected to God in its purity. Faith it is something that is speaking one thing. If today I believe in healing and I have no doubt, it doesn't matter how, how big or small my faith is, God will use it. God can multiply. If Jesus multiplied the five piece of loaves, and the five loaves and the two fish, piece of fish, and was able to feed, to feed thousands and thousands, small, tiny, Pure faith that speaks one thing that has one title 
has one direction. It's so pure. It has no doubt in it. It is just faith, tiny faith, but it is so pure. It has, it has no fear in it. It has no doubt in it. But however small it is, without fear and doubt, pure faith, Christ can multiply your faith. And that's what Christ is saying. If I can only get faith in somebody as tiny as mustard seed, but it is faith in its purity, pure faith that has no room for fear, pure faith that has no room for doubt, pure faith that cannot accommodate the influence of the devil, it is just more but very pure. Jesus, we are about to pray that faith. It can work. And that's why one of the things we need to know about faith, faith has a title. Faith has a direction. Faith has its purity. Do you know you can assume you have great faith, but your faith is still subjected to some fear. Your faith is still subjected to some doubt. Your faith is still subjected, subjected to some form of philosophy or alternatives because you have faith, but you still have other options. If faith will not work, that is not faith. However great you are, however mighty you are, that is not faith. And that's why we have people in the church who have lived long and walked with God, but faith is not working because faith must be pure. If you say, I'm declaring healing, it has to be pure just as the statement is. If I'm saying that sister receive your healing, it must be pure as the statement is. If I say, I believe tomorrow by 8 a.m. I have, I have attained my 2 million Kenya shillings and I'm so pure, there's no room of doubt in it. However small the faith is, it will work. God can work with faith, however tain, the tiny, wide, or small it is. If it is pure, so pure, it has no room of fear. And sometimes what people call faith is not faith. What people call faith is positive feeling. What people call faith is stimulation. What people call faith is human persuasion. What people sometimes call faith is encouragement. What people sometimes call faith is some impartation of feelings from somebody else. But faith, it is a pure evidence of things hopeful with no room for any external thing, but it is as pure as the faith speaks. That's very important if we can, if we can do that. In fact, you can find somebody who appears to be... And faith is simplicity. It's just as simple as God is. You know, God is supernatural but simple. If God says, rise up and walk, he means exactly that. If God says tomorrow at 10 a.m., there will be, you have 10 million rats or whatever, he means exactly that. He is pure and simple as he says. And that's what the Bible says in the, in the book of Mark uh, chapter 10. Uh, the Bible commands us uh, to have a kind of faith that are like, let's, let's read this very quickly. Uh, the, uh, Mark uh, 10 uh -huh, verse, mm -hmm, verse 15 Truly I say to you Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by any means, will by no means enter it. Is that, you know, the kingdom of God talks about the simplicity. Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. That's powerful. That's powerful. Little child, they are simple as they appear. They mean what they express. Little child, 
When they say yes, it is just pure yes. Do you know what we need to do? We, we are grown up. Is to work on ourselves, remove all impurities, remove all additionals, remove all the, all the lies, remove the deceptions, remove all the complications and philosophies we have, and be left with a seed. It's pure faith that when it says yes, it has no room for no. When it says receive, it has no room for any other word is receive. When it says I'm blessed, it means just that. The purity and the simplicity of God in faith. You know, one time, I remember T. Osborne uh, had a crusade. And I think it was in Kenya. I remember that time. And people brought the lame, the bride, the all manner of infirmities, even demon possessed. It was a, I think it was in Akuru. And there's this group of preachers who were seated with Tear Osborne in the platform. That day, Osborne demanded, he said, instead of him praying for the sick, the preachers will start. He said, now, I'd like to use you preachers and pray for the bride. Play for the blind, play for the dumb, pray for those who are possessed, pray for those who are lame, pray for them. And we request Bishop, Bishop, can you pray for that one? And Bishop will try to pray all sort of prayer. God, you know, you love this man. Lord, I know you hear from heaven. Lord, I know you are good. And Osborne would stop them on the way. Stop it, my brother. Another one come, pray. And that other one will come, God have mercy on me. Please raise this person. He is so oppressed. You know, stop it. And Osborne stood up. Instead of praying, he started calling people into healing. He would say, start walking. And limb would just walk. Start seeing. And the blood would just see. And he said in the moment, he said, I thank God. For he has given me simple faith to trust him for a miracle. Faith is simplicity of God in us. God has given me simple faith. Just I can just trust him for a miracle. To do exactly what I'm praying for. What we need to do if we are to develop faith. Can we go to God in prayer and fasting? Until God removes all impurity, philosophies, all contradiction, all self-centeredness, or whatever, and we remain in purity of faith that I, I can trust God for healing in a simple, pure way and just trust God to be what he says with no fear or room for complication. That is what we call faith. And that's why Christ is saying, if I can only get faith in somebody that is so simple and clear, a seed, master seed, I work with it. I work with it. If I can only get a preacher who says, rise up and walk, and he, he simply means that, no room for fear. God says, I can work with that faith, which is so simple. And what we, are, we want to do is that, I've come to discover great men that God is using are very simple. Let me repeat it. The great people that we see and we say they are mighty preachers, get closer to them. They are so simple. They, they are so simple. There are people who have been before God until they are so pure about God and so simple that they can only be what God says and they can only trust God to be who he is. And they are so much molded by the scriptures and godliness that their mind can only agree with God. I know who you are. I know what you are going. Your heart agrees God can raise the dead. But your mind cannot work with that. Your mind is so complicated that if you say, you, you, if you get closer to somebody and you are raising somebody from the dead, your mind questions the method. 
your mind has some questions and doubts. You ask, how will it happen? Can you imagine great men of God, their mind is so much molded by godliness, molded by the fear of God, molded by scriptures, that the mind can always allow the Holy Spirit to flow as he wants. That's what we call mighty men of God. Mighty men of God are those people who have subjected themselves to godliness so much until the mind is so clear about what God is saying. And when God says, rise up, their mind just agree with that. The mind is so much molded by godliness, molded by, the, by the, the fear of God, molded by experience of God's word, that I can only agree with what God says. That's what we call faith. Faith is simplicity of God working through me. Hallelujah. And that's why the Bible says, if you don't receive the kingdom of God as a child, you will never enter. You know, it talks about entering. Entering, fighting yourself there. Fighting yourself, speaking kingdom language. Fighting yourself, speaking kingdom authority. I am praying for you that God will remove all the complication and you just trust God for your miracle. One day we were in a baptism class and, you, uh, and I was preparing people for baptism. And I said, today I'm going to dip you in water. And it will mean you are dead to sin and you are alive in righteousness. And as I said, I'm going to dip you in water in baptism. It means you are dead with Christ and you have risen with Christ. I went further. I said, can we apply it? I said, whoever you be baptized, we can also believe God. If you are poor, you are dead to, to poverty and you are life in riches, prosperity. And I said, if you are sick and today I'm baptizing you, believe I am dead to, to, to sicknesses and I'm alive in health. One of the sisters who had never disclosed to me, she was to undergo some chemotherapy on her cervix. She had a severe, I think, terminal cervical cancer. She believed, but she never disclosed that to me. She appeared weak, but I didn't know what was going what she was undergoing. When we went for baptism, she simply trusted God. If I get into this water, I'll die with Christ. My cancer will die with Christ. And when the bishop raises me in water from the water, I'll be healed for I'll rise with Christ. Do you know she was completely healed from cancer? Simple faith that never questions God. Simple heart that allows the flow of God. Simple mind that is forced to agree with God. That is faith. Faith in his purity. May God bless you as you learn how to develop faith. I would like you to build faith because God is a miracle working God. Faith that can only allow God to be miraculous. Faith that can allow God to raise the dead. Faith that can allow God to heal cancer. Faith that can allow God to be who he is and what he says. Problem is not God. Problem are the vessels to be used. You are a Christian. You are born again. But you need to work on yourself. Be so pure that the simplicity of God will be manifested through us. And that is faith at work. May God bless you. Father, I pray for my faith. And the faith of the person who have listened to this teaching. That people you capture this move where God you work in us. Until our hearts and minds will just be highway for God. Highway for his power. Highway for his miracle. That we will one day say we thank God for he has allowed us to simply trust him to be who he is in our preaching. In Christ we pray. Amen.